How can I prepare my family for repatriation? The quote that I always like to use in connection with this topic is a quote from a very, very wise man, the Dalai Lama. There's a quote in one of his books, I think it's The Art of Living, that says, A tree with strong roots can withstand the most violent storm, but a tree can't grow roots just as the storm appears on the horizon. I happened to open his book to that section and I went, yes, he's writing about repatriation and children. And the reason he is, is because so many families, so many people don't even want to think about the day they're coming home because they're never coming home again. That's it. I always call it repatriation phobic. Children can't be raised abroad for 18 years, having never done a single thing for themselves, never figured out how to use a budget, never figured out how to clean up a toy, how to set a table, how to do laundry, had a part-time job. And so many children grow up this way. And then suddenly, oh, go to college and run their own budget, run their own life and do all this stuff. Of course, they're going to freak out because parents haven't taught them life skills. It is one of the biggest challenges for families living overseas and especially those who have teenagers who don't necessarily get a driver's license when their friends do, who don't get part-time jobs as some of their friends in their home countries might have. So I always say that from the get-go, you have to be teaching your children even little things for the day that they're going to come home. For example, taking their clothes off, folding them up, putting them back in the drawer or putting them in the laundry bin. We grew, you know, my children grew up because we spent a significant part of our time in Asia where we were fortunate enough to have household help. Now, of course, my children for till they were about 13 thought, hmm, drop clothes on the floor and it magically appears laundered and ironed in the cupboard. I would make my children the, do laundry, set a table, empty a dishwasher, make their beds, change their beds. And even my husband would say to me, why are you doing this? We have a maid who does this. And I said, because I want my children to be able to do this. I want them to be independent. I remember when we came back to Canada from Bangkok and we were in Eastern Canada, snowsuits. I thought, there's no way in heck. I just put my daughter on the floor with the snowsuit and said, you figure out how to get yourself into it. I'll make sure that you don't go out without your scarf done up. The point was I really wanted to make them independent. Too many children come out of the overseas experience without any sense of dependence, of independence at all. Part of that also is because of the current parenting zeitgeist, which is helicopter parenting. Something I've been talking about for years, which I saw completely and utterly enhanced in the expatriate world where people were concerned about security. Helicopter parenting is just what it sounds like. It's hovering, 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 and not letting a child fail, not letting a child fall, not letting a child realize that they need to fail in order to get the next success. This, as I said, is part of parenting in general, but something that's enhanced overseas. So if you end up doing every little thing for your child when they're overseas and don't teach them how to do anything for themselves, when they repatriate or when they go on with their lives, their adult lives, they're going to be on a really huge learning curve when it comes to budgeting, handling money, doing things on their own. So it's very important that you keep that in mind from the day that you set foot abroad. Remember, one day your child and yourself, but mostly your child, is going to come home and you must be uh, diligent and prepare them for that day.